Despite their roles being gradually reduced over the past two decades, the key forward remains arguably the most important position on the ground. AFL clubs will do anything to acquire a key forward and are prepared to open the checkbooks or trade away valuable assets in the process. With that in mind, you would suspect that key forwards would be hot on the menu for AFL clubs that hold the coveted number one draft selection. Yet despite this, we have not had a gun forward resulting from the first selection in the AFL draft for over 20 years. The last one was from the 2000 draft when St Kilda selected Nick Revolt. In this video, we are going to look at some of the key forwards taken since Revolt and the various reasons these men were unable to have the AFL careers that were expected of them. I'm Jackson from Off The Play, and today we are looking at key forwards and the curse of the number one draft pick. After Rewalt was taken by the Saints, the number one draft selections were as follows. Midfielders Luke Hodge, Brendan Goddard, Adam Cooney, Brett Delidio, Mark Murphy, Bryce Gibbs, a ruckman in Matthew Cruiser, and then finally in 2008, the Melbourne Football Club pounced on the most talented key position prospect in a long time, Jack Watts. Watts was a superstar prospect, almost hailed as the saviour of the struggling demons. Watts ran a 2.82 20-meter sprint and was touted by the age journalist Emma Quayle as the most complete prospect in the draft, saying he has all the athletic qualities you want in a key forward. Quick, agile, a good kick, and a great mark. His debut on the Queen's birthday weekend was built up like the second coming of Christ, but closer resembled prey being thrown to the wolves. The wolves on this occasion were the Collingwood Football Club, who took great pleasure in welcoming the skinny teenager into the big time. They pounced on him at every opportunity they could, and it was a rough start to the top level from the boy from Brighton Grammar. The Dees had chosen their biggest match of the year to name him for his debut, and the fanfare and expectation the club placed on him has led to long-term criticism. Many believe that ultimately Watts was not ready for senior football, and was instead used as a promotional tool to create a sense of hope for long-suffering Melbourne fans. Criticism has followed Watts closely throughout his career due to the expectations placed on him and that he was not living up to his potential. I do feel, however, that he was unfairly maligned and, dare I say it, underrated for portions of his career. Melbourne did get some value out of Watts. But after being traded to Port Adelaide and finishing his career at the Demons in 2017, it is fair to say that he did not turn out to be the player that everyone thought he would be. The next two number one draft selections were midfielders before expansion club Greater Western Sydney selected big key forward Jonathan Patton with the first pick of the 2011 draft. Patton's career was plagued with injuries right from the onset. He even travelled overseas before making his debut to try and sort out a knee complaint and ended up rupturing his ACL on three separate occasions. Patton showed he had the ability to play great football at AFL level. He had some tremendous games for the Giants across 2016 and 2017. He kicked a career best 45 goals in the 2017 season, but his lack of continuity due to being crueled by injuries ultimately cost Patton his chance of being an AFL superstar. Patton was later traded to Hawthorne, but could only manage a further six games before retiring from the AFL in 2021 after his involvement in an off-field controversy. A couple of years later, Greater Western Sydney would take another key forward with the number one pick when they selected the 200cm Tom Boyd from the TAC Cup. Boyd played nine games in his debut season for the Giants, kicking eight goals, before requesting a trade back to Victoria after just one year at the club. Despite the Giants' initial stance claiming that Boyd would not be traded under any circumstances, he was sent to the Bulldogs in exchange for their former captain Ryan Griffin and pick six in the 2014 AFL Draft. Boyd later signed a seven-year, $7 million contract with the Bulldogs. Let's not pull any punches here. Boyd was a highly maligned footballer during his years at the Doggies, and he finished with 52 games in the red, white, and blue. He suffered with both injuries and mental health and announced his retirement during the 2019 season. After just 61 games, it was not the career many thought he would have. Boyd, however, did stand tall when it mattered most for the Bulldogs, and that was with his three-goal performance in the 2016 Grand Final. Nothing can take that away from him. Boyd took the advantage of Blade on from inside the centre square. Boyd kicked the goal. Boyd oh. kicked the goal from inside the centre. Fuck! I can't believe that. Hulking forward Paddy McCartan edged out powerful midfielder Christian Petrarca to be the first overall selection in the AFL draft. The story of McCartan's short career at St Kilda was his tragic run of concussions that derailed not just his football career, but at one stage, his life. Having had my own battles with concussion, thankfully not as serious as McCartan's, 
I've found his story fascinating to follow over the years. He gives a really good insight of his story on the Dill and Friends podcast. I think it was eight concussions in total, which resulted in him playing just 35 games for the Saints. At the time of this video, McCartan is playing in the VFL for Sydney with the hopes of rekindling his AFL career. So best of luck to the big fella. This brings us back to our most recent key forward number one draft selection. The Bulldogs is Jamari Eugle Hagen. He certainly looks a super talent and has been impressive so far at VFL level. Will he continue to carry the curse of the key forward on the number one pick, or will he turn out to be one of the game's genuine superstars? Let us know in the comments how good you think Jamari Eugle Hagen will be. Please subscribe to Off The Play, and thanks very much for watching.